my preferred way to look at it is the amount of total time on screens. Um, and the reason for that is I feel like, you know, even if my daughter sat there playing reading eggs on an iPad for six hours a day, right? Is that really healthy when she should be out in the backyard, you know, kicking a ball or down at the beach or whatever it may be? You know, I don't know. I, I don't feel as though that's a good healthy balance if she's on reading eggs for six hours. So anything in excess is a problem. Um, and I think many of us know that just generally in life as well. So when it comes to good versus bad content, yes, you can make that distinction. We should also keep in mind that, you know, teenagers, you can, and again, this is the classic one, Charlie, right, is the parents that came in with a 14-year-old child who uh, had access to YouTube because they're supposed to be doing some homework. You know, oh, Dad, it's a history assignment. You know, I'm, I'm watching a documentary. And, and sure enough, like 10 minutes later, um, he's watching his favourite YouTuber or he's watching gameplay. Um, or whatever it may be on there, or he's just gaming um, or, or on social media. So the problem with the good versus bad media debate is that you end up in a scenario where you think you're allowing them to access good content, especially when they're older, but they're not. They're accessing whatever it is that they want to access, yeah? So I think that there are certain, um, you know, devices and ways in the technology space, um, Jimmy being one of them, of course, where you can be a little bit more selective now in accessing good versus bad content, but it's still a struggle. Um, and for me, it still comes back to the overall screen time versus off screen time.